Let's see how we can sketch this cubic polynomial the pre-calculus way. So we are going to find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the sign chart, and also the end behavior, and then we will go from there. So let's get started with the y-intercept. And for this, we will just first let x to be 0 and plug in, and that will give us the y-intercept. p of x is the y, and that will be 0 to the third power minus 3 times 0 squared. I know the answer is 4, but like, let me just show you guys all the work. And here's the 4. Done. 0, 4 is the y-intercept. Next, for the x-intercepts. For this right here, it's slightly more difficult, but the first step is we let y to be 0. So we put 0 in here, and we will have to solve for x. So we're looking at 0 equals x to the third power minus 3x to the second power plus 4. How do we solve this? If you have a graphing calculator, make sure that you take advantage of that. Just take a look at the picture and then just make mm, look at the zero. But of course, that defeats the purpose, right? Um, but use your calculator to check the answer for you. That's a good idea. For this right here, we pay attention to the last number. We have a four. And let's see if we can find a zero by just looking at these numbers. We'll notice that the coefficient here is one and the coefficient here is negative three. Well, if we have negative 1 minus 3 and then plus 4, that will be 0, right? So we can actually see by inspection. But of course, you can also look at the 4 and then just break down 4 as like 1, 2, 4, and then they are plus or minus. And you can use these numbers to test out. But I will tell you, notice x equals negative 1 is a 0, meaning it's a solution to this, meaning it's an x-intercept. With that being said, this implies x plus 1, by adding the 1 on both sides, is a factor of the polynomial right here. And this is huge because now we can do the synthetic division and then we can break it apart. So here we go. Write down the coefficients and we have 1 and then negative 3. And there's no x, right? So that means 0x. So I will just put 0 as a placeholder, and then we have the 4. And then we are going to put the negative 1 right here. Or if you look at this right here, when we divide this polynomial by this factor, you do the opposite, and that's negative 1, or that. So this is the setup, and here is the synthetic division. We put the 1 down, and then we multiply negative 1 with this, and then put it here. Negative 1 times this is negative 1. And for synthetic division, we are going to add this plus that, we get negative 4. And then we just continue. Negative 1 times negative 4, we get positive 4. And then we add, we get 4. Lastly, negative 1 times 4, we get negative 4. We add, the remainder is 0. The remainder is 0, that means that we did it right, because we know this is the factor, so this is a good hint. Now. Originally, we have x to the third power. These right here are the quotient parts, and this right here is the remainder. And for the quotient, we will start with one degree less, because we divide it by x to the first power. So this right here will be 1x to the second, and then this is x, and this is the constant term. So with that said, we know that our polynomial, I will just write it down right here. We can factor this as x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x and then plus 4. So that's how we factor it. And then right here, of course, we can continue factoring it. So we are looking at x plus 1 times this is actually x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. And again, we are making this equal to 0. So, of course, x plus 1 is equal to 0, which we knew that over, over there already. x minus 2 squared equals 0. From here, we know x is equal to negative 1. And from here, we know x is equal to 2. Even though the question didn't ask, but I will tell you, this 0 with multiplicity 1, the multiplicity of this is 1 because it was only to the first power. But for this, 2, it's actually multiplicity 2. It happened twice. Alright, so keep that in mind. 
That's why we have only two zeros, but this runner here repeated twice. So it's negative one and then two, two. All right, so that's that, but let me erase the multiplicity because we just want the graph. Mm, that's good. Now let's go ahead and do the sign chart. Let's put it right here, sign chart. And to do so, here is the number line. And we'll be looking at the factor form of the polynomial. So it is p of x equals x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. And we care about this and that, negative 1 and 2. Now, pick a number less than negative 1. Let's say we have negative 2. And we plug into here and here. When we put negative 2 in here, negative 2 plus 1 is negative, times put negative 2 in here, minus 2, and then square. It's going to give us positive. So here we get positive. Now pick a number between negative 1 and 2, let's say 0. Put it here, put it here. It's positive, and then it's negative but square again is positive. So we get positive. And um, sorry, this right here was negative. Negative minus positive, sorry, this is negative. All right, and then pick a number bigger than two that say 17. No, just kidding, just pick three. Pick three, plug in here, plug in here, we get positive times positive, yeah? So this right here will be positive. So that's how you worked out the sign chart. Now let's also talk about the end behavior. End behavior. And this is slightly more like calculus because it tells us about the limit, the approach and all that. And we only care about two places, x approaching negative infinity or x approaching positive infinity. And we will have to figure out how does the y behave. And this is the language that we use. For now, we are not using the limit language, the LIM, not yet. Okay. As x goes to negative infinity, that means we look at the left, we have a negative value, and that will tell us y goes to negative infinity. Let's put it down right here, negative infinity. When x goes to positive infinity, we go all the way to the right, and you see that the value here is positive, so y goes to positive infinity, just like that. Finally, we can make a quick sketch. So here we go. Usually I will tell students to label this and that, which are the x-intercept, which we have negative 1 and also 2. Right? So two x-intercepts right here. Okay. And then we will also label the y-intercept, which is 0, 4. Right here, I will say. Let's say this is 4. Now, look at the end behavior. As x goes to negative infinity, that's the left hand side. Y goes to negative infinity, so it will be going down like this. Okay? And then as y goes to positive infinity, well as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. So it will be like this. And what's in the middle though? Be really careful. What's in between of negative one and two? Does it go up or go down? Well, it has to cross the four right here. <laughs> or you can also look at this, it has to be positive. So in fact, the picture will look like this. And make sure that it's all curvy. There shouldn't be any corner or whatnot, right? And this might not be the maximum, but I'll tell you it's about like this, I'll say. And then you go down. Again, curvy and all that. I don't know where the maximum is. It's not in the middle of this and that. I'm not sure, right? It could be, maybe, but yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Just keep the shape like this and we will be good to go. So this is the pre way to make the sketch of a cubic polynomial. If you want to see another example, check out the other video. That's it.